that's give a praise to God that's gonna shake the heavens oh hallelujah oh with your presence, Lord. Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come on, church, let's be free today. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come on, let's be free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come on, let's shout at the top of our Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh,
just want to be with you, Lord. Just want to be with you. It's all about you, Jesus. Just raise up our offering to the Lord right now. There's such freedom in the presence of the Lord. If you need something, it's found in the presence of the Lord. Listen, some people like to count sheep. I like to spend time in the presence of the Lord. That's my rest. That's my place. That's the shelter of the Most High. It's a shadow from under His wing. The secret place. The secret place. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. My brothers and sisters, let's welcome each other today. Let's welcome each other today. Let's get out of our seats. Let's welcome each other on how good God is. Let's just walk, say hello to one another. And make sure that that really tall guy back there, that was the best man at my wedding. Stand up, Roy. That's Roy. Everybody, like, just completely smother him. He's a big bear, trust me.
Well, praise the Lord. Listen, I hear, uh, before we get into the word, and I've got a good word for you today, God orchestrated something that was, uh, well, I don't want to break the surprise, but it's just amazing what he did. Um, I could not have planned it in that way in any shape or form. But before I do that, I want to know, how many graduates do we have here today? Abby Yuri tried that on me. It doesn't work. Angel, is there any other graduates from middle school or ladies, your husbands have graduated into a better husband or? All right, all right. All right, well, you know what, Angel? I guess it's just going to be you. Come on up. Center of attention. Oh, oh, oh. you know, I'm going to make you feel good. Mom and dad, you got to come with your son. Let's go. Come on. The mom and dad, let's go. Yes. Come on, you're sporting a living word shirt for crying out loud. Come on up here. Get on either side of this young man. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11 is Irene and I's uh, favorite scripture, but I believe it really m- means something for graduates. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You know, we're gathering uh, together right now for Angel, and we'll do this for anybody, but we're doing it for Angel today because he's a graduate of high school. And uh, we want to honor those that have come to this milestone of graduation. Because it is a milestone. Now, those of you that graduate from, <laughs> you guys are bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> we celebrate what God has done in Angel's life. That there's so many people who don't finish high school, okay? And he's finished high school. And from what I understand, he's going into the service, okay? Is it the Air Force again? It's the Air Force. It's going to be an Air Force man, amen? And listen, yeah, on Memorial Day weekend, right? And we celebrate what he's become through God's grace. And we also celebrate and pray pray a blessing over what he's yet to become. Because he's just starting his new journey. And God's word declares that before he was even formed in his mother's womb, that he knew him. And he spoke a divine inheritance over him. And we want him to walk that walk that God has. So I'm going to pray over him. If the parents would place their hands on uh, on top of him. Just put your hand on him, Joey. Not suddenly, just, just put your hand on him. It says, Mighty God, we bless and protect Angel as he continues his journey. I ask that you provide for his needs, that you defend him from every enemy, from every distraction. I ask that you remind him to lean on your strength and not his own. I ask that your steadfast love and faithfulness would be shown through him and would be sent to him during troubles during sorrows and during setbacks. I ask that your steadfast love and faithfulness will help him face the future unafraid, knowing that you're in control. To you, O God, be all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, angel, turn around, because I'm going to give you a scripture. And you can read it again later, because you probably won't remember it all right now. Because I know, I know I'm not your uh, military commander. You, you don't have one yet. But Proverbs 3.1. Proverbs 3.1 says, My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them up about thy neck. Write them upon the tablet of thy heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lead not unto thy own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son... Despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrects, even as a father, the son in whom he delights. God bless you, angel. Well, amen. One down and lots of graduates to go, huh? All these young people, I don't know. Well, we've been talking about the blood, amen? 
In fact, I'm going to continue talking about the blood because the blood is a better word. Come on. It's a better word. Why? Because it's all about the blood from Genesis to Revelation. Last week, we started talking about the blood sacrifices, and we talked about the Levitical system. And the Levitical system had the burnt offering, the sin offering, the guilt or trespass offering, and the peace offering. And we found out that the peace offering is actually three offerings, right? The, the praise or thanks offering, the vow offering, and the free will offering. So it's actually three in one on that one. And last week, we spoke on the burnt offering, and I'm just going to review that real quick because I, I want to cover the other ones real quickly today. But the burnt offering, remember, it was found in, you can find it in Leviticus 1 and Leviticus chapter 6, okay? If you want to look at yourself. It was offered daily in the morning and the evening, and in some days it was actually offered more than that, okay? And it was a burnt offering, and it was for the purpose of consecrating the worshiper of God, okay? In other words, covering the sins... So we could go and present ourselves to God. Now remember, it required a young animal from the person's own herd. Remember, before the the temple was uh, corrupted, where you go in and buy yourself a sacrifice, God wanted you to raise the animal yourself and put the time and the effort into raising the animal that had to be perfect and without spot or blemish. He wanted you to do that because sin has what? A personal cost. There's a personal cost to sin. And so God wanted us to have a personal cost. He wanted to show that. Now, it was a young male animal. It was a bull, a lamb, a ram, or a goat. There could be no blemishes on the body. In other words, this animal had to be protected its entire life. And if you were poor and couldn't afford one of those animals, you were allowed to sacrifice a bird, okay? A dove, whatever it was, okay? And it signified, this offering signified full consecration. What does that mean? That when you did this sacrifice, remember, what did you do at the temple opening? You put your hand on the animal, and it was a transference of your sin and your family's sin onto this innocent animal, right? So it was full consecration. In other words, all of your sins that you had committed up to that point were covered by the blood that was about to be spilled by the animal. It was also considered a full surrender, to the Lord because you were acknowledging I have sinned my family has sinned and we need to be covered for our sins now always remember there's a personal cost and the personal cost is so vivid you got to remember this there's a cost for sin and the only payment acceptable for sin is blood okay it's not I'm sorry it's not I'm trying to live a good life it's blood okay And that's how we know that we can't earn our way to heaven. The Bible says that, amen? It says that you can't earn your way to heaven. You have to be what? Washed in the blood of the Lamb. Why? Because the only payment that God takes for sin is blood. Since Genesis 3, when when God sacrificed animals to cover Adam and Eve himself, to Revelation, it's always been blood. Amen? Somebody say amen. So I want to go on and I want to move on to the sin offering. The sin offering is found in Leviticus 4. And Leviticus 6, okay? It's called the sin offering. Now, remember with the burnt offering, everything was burnt to a crisp, right? Nothing was eaten. Nothing was, everything was burnt to a crisp. Again, the person went, they transferred their sins. Then the person himself had to plunge the knife into the animal, the one he had raised. And then he had to go ahead and give the priest the animal in pieces to be burnt on the altar. And everything was burnt to, in other words, there was nothing left because it was burnt to a crisp. We well, got that, right? That's the burnt offering. That's for full consecration. But now we're talking about the sin offering. This was used, and a lot of us will say, well, that's what I need is a sin offering, because this is what it was. It was used for a sin done in ignorance. In other words, I didn't know I was messing up. Now, how many of you know we mess up all the time? And a lot of us mess up because of ignorance. A lot of us mess up because we choose to. But there are some sins that we do because of ignorance. Now, there's a huge difference, and I want to get to this, but there's a huge difference. Listen, it was an unintentional sin. It was not realized when they were doing it. It was a lot of times it was done. They did it and realized, oh, wait a minute, I just broke the Sabbath. Or wait a minute, I just did this. I didn't know I sinned. So it was an unintentional sin. But either way, sin is sin. Amen? So even if it wasn't deliberate, it still separates us from God. See, we like to say, well, what about the people across the earth that, you know what, they don't even know they're sinning. They don't even know about Jesus. What happens with them? Sin is sin. It still separates from God. If not, then Jesus never would have told us to go into the nations and preach the good news. He would have said, leave them ignorant. Then they'll all get to heaven. 
But he couldn't do that because sin is sin. And what's the payment for sin? Blood. So this sin offering was for sin that was undeliberate. It, it, was, it, was, it was not deliberate, they, unintentional. And again, it was a young bull. The blood was actually sprinkled in front of the veil in the Holy of Holies. Not in the Holy of Holies, but in front of the veil, the blood was sprinkled. And then the, the other blood was sprinkled on the horns of the altar. You all know that on the brazen altar, there was four horns on the corners. A lot of times, the priest would go and grab the horns and pray because the horns represented the sacrifices. But what would happen is that same blood for the sin offering, they would sprinkle it on the horns. And then they would get the blood and they would pour it out at the base of the altar. Not into the altar, at the base of the altar. They would pour out all the blood that was there. The rest of the animal was then taken outside the camp. And if it was for like a whole group of people, let's say the family of, uh, of um, I don't know, the family of Moses came and said, look, we all made a mistake. We kept something. We did something. We didn't realize it, but it's a sin. What would happen is that animal was taken outside the camp and it was burned outside the camp. You want to know why? Because God was saying it's done. It's finished. It's not even among, among you anymore. Okay. But if it was for an individual, what would happen is all that was done, and then what would happen is that they would actually eat the sacrifice, the priest. They would eat, they'd have a barbecue, okay? And they would eat the sacrifice. Because what they were saying was that we're the priest, you're the worshiper, you made a mistake, and you are what? We're partaking of the same thing. I need to teach you. I need to teach you better because you made a sin out of ignorance, and I haven't done my job to teach you. You see? So he was partaking of the same thing the worshiper was doing if it was an individual, okay? How many of you know you've sinned against God in ignorance? We all have. God needs to, we need forgiveness for that. Listen, sometimes we say, well, I have, I've been real good lately. I mean, for at least the past 24 hours, I haven't done anything wrong. I bet you you have. But you're ignorant to what you did. So we need to ask God to forgive us even of those sins we're not aware of. Because he actually made an offering just for it. Now that's the sin offering, right? Let me talk to you about the guilt offering. It's found in Leviticus chapter 5 and Leviticus chapter 6, okay? There's a big difference between the sin offering and the guilt offering. Not only do you do the offering with blood. Listen to this. But you pay restitution out of your pocket in this offering how much is the restitution it is the full value of whatever you stole or whatever you took plus 20 percent god's a good banker isn't he he says you're going to pay the full value of what you stole plus you're going to add 20 percent on top of that and you're going to give it to the person you offended the person you took from, the person you stole from, whatever it was, that guilt offering says you're going to put that 20% on top of the full value of it. So to the offended person, they got that. And listen, what was interesting is the guilt offering was I have sinned and I know it. Whether I got caught or I just feel guilty, you knew you had done wrong. How many have sinned and you know it? Good. Most of you are being honest today. That's a good thing. This is what the Lord told me. He says, tell my people that in today's world, when, they, when I wash them white as snow for the sins that they've committed, he says, let them know that not only do I pay the full, full value of the sin they've committed, but I add 20%. I said, what, is, what, do you, what does that mean, Lord? I said, what, you, what are you talking about? I understand what it means in the Old Testament, but what are you talking about when you t say, tell the people, not only do I cover the full value or, the, or, or whatever it is that you've sinned. Let's say you, uh, you, know, you commit uh, adultery. He says, not only am I going to pay that sin off, he says, but I'm going to add 20% on it. And I said, what are you trying to get across? He says, that I have more than washed away the sin. I've done more than just wash away the sin. He says, I've given them a head start into walking with me again. Isn't God good? 
He says, I'm not just going to, I'm not just going to wash away the sin. He says, I'm going to wash away the sin and then I'm going to add an extra 20%. I'm going to give such grace that not only can they be forgiven of the sin, but I can restore them and put them back in the direction that they need to go. He says, because I am the Lord God and I paid it all with my blood and then some. And I found that so interesting. I said, wow, Lord, you're so awesome. I mean, you don't just forgive me when I say I confess my sins to you, Lord. But you pay the price that I'm supposed to pay. And you give a 20% increase on top of that. So I can walk out saying not only is it paid for, but I even got a little bit extra to go forward. See, so many times what happens as Christians, beloved, is we sin. And then we sit there and we walk around in our sin and we say, yeah, okay, I I think he forgave me or I don't know if he can forgive me again or you don't know what I've done, Lord. Let me tell you something. The Lord not only has washed your sin through this sin offering, but he's added a little extra so that you can start walking in the right direction so you can be restored because our God is a God about restoration. He's not a condemning God. He says, those that are in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation. He doesn't condemn you. He doesn't push on you. He doesn't beat on you. He restores you. And he not only pays the price for whatever sin you committed, no matter how many times you've committed it, but he gives a little extra grace so you can get up in the morning and say, time to start again. You know, I'll share with you what I've always shared with you, and I'll share it again. When I realized the love of God was when I found out that he not only was willing to forgive me for a sin I kept committing, but he was willing to forgive me knowing that day that I would be committing that sin the next day. Then I realized what the love of God was all about. Then I understood what it was all about, because it was about what? It's about a forgiveness that knows no end. And a grace... That is more than enough. Say more than enough. (laughs) My God adds 20% on top of whatever I deserve. He doesn't just pay the bill. He pays in advance. He pays in advance. I'm telling you, some of you are walking in condemnation. Some of you are walking, I don't know if God can forgive me. I don't know if, if God could actually pay this bill. There is no bill that God cannot pay with the blood of Jesus. There's no bill, and he can not only pay it, but he'll add 20% on top, which means you'll have the grace to start walking in that grace and that mercy right away. Oh, I hope you got a hold of that today, church, because we need to start walking, start walking as he wants. I want to talk to you about peace offerings. We're gonna, I got something so exciting for you today. I don't know why. Oh, I hope I'm not the only one that's excited about it because when I, you know, I'm just going to be let down if you guys don't get it. Oh, Lord. There's three peace offerings, right? There's the praise or thankful offering. There's the vow offering. Now, the praise and thanks offering, that's, for like, a, that's like an F extra offering to say thank you for blessing me. That's all it is, okay? And it doesn't have to necessarily be money. It can be, you know what, I just, I just you know, I just, uh, I got a car for a great price or I got a new job. And you're going to sit there and say, Lord Jesus, thank you. I just give you praise. And I'm uh, offering a praise. And I just lift up your name right now, Lord. Why? Because you've blessed me and I want to bless you back. That's all it is, okay? And then there's a vow offering under the peace offering. And that is basically to demonstrate that a vow has been fulfilled. I'll give you an example. Me and my wife are 13 years going on 14 years. We could have a vow offering on our anniversary and basically say, you know what? I, my wife has fulfilled her vows. I fulfilled my vows. And God has fulfilled his vows in the relationship. So we give you a praise offering, a vow offering, Lord. We're just going to give you a little extra time right now. Okay, And then there's the free will offering, and that's the one Christians, brothers and sisters, you should be doing every day of your life. The free will offering is this. It's not Thursday. It's not Sunday. It's whatever day I'm going to give you my free time, I'm going to freely, willfully give it to you because you're an awesome God. So I'm, I'm going to do it right now because you're an awesome God. I'm going to praise you right now. It doesn't have to be Sunday or Thursday. Those are days that we've set aside. It's just because, it's just because I freely, willfully give it to you. It's gratitude from a glad heart. How many of you have gratitude for God today? See? So shouldn't we be doing that all the time? It's a free will. Now there's a reason they call them peace offerings. Are you ready? 
You know why they call them peace offerings? Because it was offered by those that were at peace with God. I know that was hard, right? But it is hard because many of you are not at peace with God. Many of you were so caught up with the sin offering or the guilt offering or the burn offering. So many of you come into church and you're beat down and you're dragged out and you're saying, man, I don't know, Pastor Jesse, this is getting harder and harder. Many of you are doing these things. And the truth is, is that the only time you'll ever get to the peace offering is if you're at peace with God. Now, how do you get peace with God? Everyone wants to know, right? Plead the blood. And then believe that the blood is more than enough. In fact, it's 20% more than enough. These were offered by those that were at peace with God. It brought, they were expressing gratitude. They were expressing fellowship. Now, let me ask you a question. Who here is at peace with God today? Okay. If you raised your hands, then I say that you should be giving a peace offering to the Lord. If you're truly At peace with God, you should be giving him a peace offering to the Lord. And if you're doing it on Thursdays and Sundays, that's not a peace offering. That's a day that we've set aside. A peace offering is done on a different day. That you maybe get into your room and you praise him by by yourself. Or you get on your face and and you worship him by yourself. That's what a peace offering is. Now, oh Lord, here we go. The peace offering could not be offered at any time, by the way, in the Old Testament. It could only be offered on Pentecost. Okay? That's the only time it could be offered in the Old Testament. And this was interesting. The offering was to be presented spontaneously as the feelings of the worshiper started to feel it. So in other words, the priest would be there and do whatever the priest was doing. But literally, it's when the worshiper decided to start giving this offering that it actually was instigated and it started to get done. So it was all about what? That person making the choice to praise God. Okay? Are you hearing me, church? The offering was an animal sacrifice. The fat was burned on the altar and the remaining was eaten by the worshiper and the priest. And it had to be eaten the same day or the next day. Okay? Okay? So in other words, it was a barbecue again, okay? But this one was a good barbecue because this was like, we're going to burn all the fat for God, the smell, everything else, and then we're going to eat this food because this is a good offering. This is somebody that's at peace with God. I didn't transfer my sins. My sins have already been covered. I didn't have to pay restitution because that's already been taken care of. This is somebody who's at peace with God. Now, you said you were at peace with God, amen? Amen. So here's the deal. I'm going to ask you a question. When was the last time you made a sacrifice of gratitude for God? What does sacrifice mean? It costs you something. Time, effort, money. When is the last time you made a sacrifice of gratitude for God? For God. Let's have the worship team come up here. Come on, quickly. Sacrifice means it costs you something, right? When is the last time you made a sacrifice of gratitude for God? How about a sacrifice of fellowship? Lord, I I really, I've got something to do. But I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to sacrifice because I want to fellowship with you right now. When's the last time you did that? When's the last time that you said, Lord, I just want to spend time with you. I've got all kinds of things to do. When's the last time you called into work? Not because you were tired and didn't want to go in, but because you said, listen, I'm going to be a little late because God's calling me into prayer. We miss work and go into work for so many other reasons. Except that. When's the last time you gave an offering, monetary, over your tithe? Over your tithe. 
Listen, I'm not going to hold back. I'm just going to tell you the truth. Some of you don't tithe. Some of you do. Tithing, according to the Bible, is an obligation. Malachi says, you rob me when you don't tithe. Well, here's the deal. An offering is above the tithe. Some of you tithe, but I couldn't tell you the last time you gave an offering, and you couldn't tell me. Why? Because you think you've met your obligation. But let me tell you something. If I'm willing to give a sacrifice of praise, if I'm willing to give a sacrifice of gratitude, it's not just our time, it's also our money. Now, why am I telling you this? Because I think you need to understand something. I got something very exciting to share with you that I did not plan. In fact, I couldn't have planned this. It was only the Lord. I told you earlier that the peace offerings in the Old Testament were only allowed to be sacrificed on Pentecost, right? You remember that? Unknowing to me that this part of the series would be on this day, today, May 27, 2012, is actually the day of Pentecost. Not because I say so. The church is recognizing today, May 27th, as the day of Pentecost. Today, right now. Not tomorrow, right now. We're standing on the day of Pentecost. And these peace offerings were allowed only on the day of Pentecost. And what the Lord was telling me, he says, let them know. Let them know that they can make a sacrifice of gratitude, a sacrifice of praise and worship, a monetary sacrifice, whatever it is. Let them know, he says, that today they can do that and they will see instant reward within this week, is what he told me. I said, really? And he says, yeah, let them know that. He says, because, he says, not only can you make this day of sacrifice, he says, not only is the sermon about peace offerings today and something that can only be done on the day of Pentecost, but re remember what happened on the peace offerings? After they did the sacrifice, they ate. What are we doing today after service? We're eating. I'm telling you, the Lord has put something together here. And it's not something that I designed and not something that I planned and not something that it, I wouldn't even tell Irene. I wouldn't tell anybody what was going on because he gave it to me. And he said, listen, not only can we have the sacrifice of praise and sacrifice of gratitude today, the Lord says you're going to eat as well. He says you're going to symbolically do everything that they did in the Old Testament. You're going to do it right now. He says, and if my children will show me gratitude, he says, I'll give them instant gratification he says within this week now, this is what the Lord said I said Lord you know we're coming up on first Thursdays just next week and he says I know he says on that first Thursday you can expect testimony after testimony of those that show me gratitude today that's what he said now listen I'm going to tell you I'm going to open up would you stand to your feet we're going to sing a couple more songs and we've opened up the altar again just like we did on Thursday and here's the deal. I'm not going to pray over you. I'm not. Because the Lord says, I don't want them showing me gratitude because you prayed for them. I want them to choose to show me gratitude. I want them to choose to show me worship. So this is what the Lord said. He says, you can dance, you can sing, you can do banners, you can do whatever you want to do and worship the Lord together. He says, but don't do it because somebody else is doing it. The Lord says, have them know that I want them to do it for me. Did you hear what I said, church? Don't do it because somebody's watching you do it. Don't do it because you saw somebody else do it. Do it for the Lord because today is the day of Pentecost. Today. And if today is the day of Pentecost, then what I want you to understand is simply this. Today's a day of peace offering. Some of you are in financial burden. I will challenge you to put money in that offering basket during the worship, not just your tithes. I'm saying money on top of the tithes because God said there's immediate gratification. Some of you say, I can't pay my tithes, Pastor Jesse. You don't know my bills. It's a funny thing when you pay your tithes, all of a sudden God gives you enough to pay your bills. That's his word. That's not mine. You know, we sit here and I know that Irene and I can stand before God and say we always pay our tithes. Turn this down, Roger. 
We always pay our tithes. Why do we always pay our tithes? Because one, I fear God. It's my obligation. Two, I'm the pastor. If the pastor doesn't pay his tithes, how could he expect you guys to pay tithes? But you want to know what God was telling me? Just this week, we sent $100 to Pakistan again. You sent $100 to Pakistan again. And immediately, I got pictures within a day, because we do it Western Union. It lets me know that the guy picked it up. And immediately, I get pictures of the widows and the orphans being fed. Immediately. New pictures. He never sends the same pictures. He sent, immediately, there's these bags of food that he's giving to the mothers so that they can take it home with them. It's on Facebook if you're friends with him. How can we as a church go in a few minutes and go and eat and not realize that there's people who need that and you, I'm an extension of you, I'm the pastor, you're the the partners, Uh, you have just sent $100, which is about 9,000 rupees to feed these people. You fed widows and orphans today. We just sent them the money. You did it. But how can we go and go and eat and not do that? Beloved, I'm telling you, right now when we start to praise and worship, I'm telling you, you do it for God. You do it alone just for God. You you come up here and you do what you're going to do. And I don't care what you look like. God doesn't care what you sound like. He cares where it comes from. And if all you're doing is thinking, if anybody's looking at me, or all you're doing is thinking about what we're going to go eat in a few minutes. If all you do is thinking about something else and you're not thinking about God, then don't bother coming up. Because this is a sacrifice of praise for him, not for me. Beloved, you need to understand something. Whatever you do right now, God is going to take notice. And unlike me that can be deceived by out- outward appearances... God will not be deceived. He knows the heart and he knows the intent of the heart. Will you give God a sacrifice of gratitude today? Hallelujah. Just bow your heads. Father, we just come before you, Lord. And Lord, I, I, I couldn't have put this together with the day of Pentecost. I couldn't put this together with a, with a series on, of the blood being on peace offerings. I, I couldn't put this together, but you did for a reason, Lord. I pray, Father, right now, as the music is going to get started in a few minutes, God, that you would call your people up to the altar and they would sing and they would dance and they would, they would testify of your goodness. They would show gratitude, Father. I pray, Lord, those that are in financial straps, that they would literally grab into their pocket and drop money uh, into, into this basket so that they can feed widows and orphans, so they can do things for others, and that they would understand, Lord, that this week there will be immediate results from what they're about to do. Listen, I'm putting myself out there by telling you this, folks, but that's what the Lord said. He said, this week, there'll be immediate results. This week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to just be honest with you. I really feel a holiness right now. A holiness, a stillness. Um, this is serious stuff right now because God wants to know Wherever you're at, whatever problems you have, if you truly are at peace with him, that you would give him a peace offering in your singing, in your dancing, and in your finances, whatever it is. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Because the only one you're holding back is yourself. God wants to bless you today. And I tell you what, however you bless them, as hard as you bless them, as much effort as you put into it, I guarantee you, God outgives whatever you can give. He can outgive you easily. So, beloved, if you're going to give him that offering, if you're going to dance to him or worship him, I want you to start coming up to the front. If you've made a decision to give him a sacrifice of praise today, I want you to start coming up to the front because there's lots of room. Okay? 
if you've made that decision. And it's between you and God. There's no condemnation. If you say, no, I'm going to stay on my seat, that's okay. Because there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. God wants to know that you're going to make a sacrifice for him. And you can come up here and you can sacrifice in any way, shape, or form that you want to. Because God is good. He's good. So during this praise and worship, I want you to forget who's behind you, forget who's in front of you. I'm not praying for anybody. This is not about you. It's about him. And I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I want you to give it to him. We, pr we actually did a little bit Thursday, didn't we? We did a little bit Thursday. Well, let me tell you something. It's time to let loose and increase on that. Amen? So let's give him a sacrifice right now. The Lord has told me that there are songs to me, there are songs about me. When you give your praise, give it from your heart, just as the pastor said. But sing and do whatever it is you're going to do. Give your high praises to God. Don't sing the words of a song. Sing to our Lord and our King. The greatest day in history, death is beat and you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. Oh, happy day, happy day. You washed my sins away, and oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. When I stand in that place, free at last, meeting face to face, I am yours, Jesus, you are mine. Endless joy and perfect peace, earthly pain, finally we'll see. Celebrate, Jesus is alive. He's alive. Happy day, happy day. You washed my sins away and oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. The greatest day, the greatest day in history, death is beaten, you have rescued me, sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day, shout it out. Jesus is alive. He's alive. Oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sins away and oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same and oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sins away and oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. That's 
time And oh, happy day, happy day You wash my sins away And oh, happy day, happy day I'll never be the same Turn your ear to heaven and hear the noise inside. The sound of an angel's song, the sound of an angel's songs, and all this for a king. We could join and sing. All to Christ the King How constant, how divine This song of ours will rise How constant, how divine This love of ours will rise Will rise Oh, praise Him Oh, praise Him, He is holy, He is holy. Turn your gaze to heaven and raise a joyous noise. The sound of salvation come. The sound of rescued ones and all this for a king. Angels join to sing. All for Christ our King. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. He is holy. He is holy.
la 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 Let us give a shout to the Lord. The enemy has been defeated. The Lord has told us that he wants to restore us to what he sees us. The Lord wants to restore us to what he wants us to be. Lord, release that in the name of Jesus. I speak restoration to finances, to relationships. Lord, restore us in our walk with you. Yes, just Lord. the way that Adam did. The yes. way that Moses did. If they can do it, how can, how can we can, Lord? The blood has been shed. The Lord said, it is finished. Lord, I don't want to go one more day. Not one more day, Lord, without giving my all to you. Come on, church, make this a declaration. Make it a declaration today. The enemy's been defeated. The enemy's been defeated. The enemy's been defeated. Shout unto God. The enemy's been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated, and death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift the name up. We lift the name up. The enemy's been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. The enemy's been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift the name up. We lift the name up.
Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Just like the walls of Jericho, let our shouts break through. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Sing another song to our Lord. Yeah. Let's sing How Great Is Our God. Our God, the one who walked on water, the one who created with the word. Amen. The splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, tremble of that his voice. How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God How great, how great our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. The splendor, the splendor of the King, clothed in let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age. Age. The Godhead, three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great, how great is our God. 
Zagan. Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God, how great, how great is our God. From your heart, great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great is our God. With everything you got, how great 
is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great. great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see. 